Good morning, guys. So today we're going to talk about Michaela. She's on TikTok, and I want to talk about her because I want to talk about how it relates to using beauty filters with ads. I haven't talked about this in a little while. This is something that I used to talk about, you know, more frequently when I was really talking a lot about makeup. Um, beauty gurus specifically that focused only on makeup. Um, but I was watching a video and it made me think of this. So I figured it would be a good time to make it a topic for a video. But first of all, I want to show you guys this juice right here. It's made by a company called Natalie's. It's tangerine juice and it's so freaking delicious. It's really hot out this morning, and for some reason, this was in my fridge, and it just called to me as soon as I opened my fridge door. So I still have my caffeine, but that freaking juice this morning, you know, you like open the fridge, and it was like a halo was around it, and it was perfect. So anyway, so let's talk about Michaela. I'm a little nervous to talk about her only because <clears throat> she has fans that are very devoted, I'll say. Um, but I'm also not here to drag her or anything like that. I just think that something that she said relates to the topic of this video. And what she said is that she does not use beauty filters on her videos. She doesn't use anything like Photoshop or any kind of skin tuning app or anything like that. And I find that really interesting because not only is it very, very obvious that she does in fact use apps like that and she definitely you know, skin tunes and fine tunes her photos, especially on Instagram. <clears throat> the problem that I have is not so much people using Facetune. Like that, that's not a big deal for, for me personally. If you're just going to Facetune a photo and it's going to make you feel better about posting the photo on social media, I get that. Social media can be really, really brutal and people can make really nasty comments about everything from <clears throat> the shape of your eyes to the way your skin looks to the way your pores look to the way your hair looks. I totally get that. So if adding a little Facetune is going to help someone, that's fine. But the problem is, is that these influencers and beauty gurus use these apps in order to make the result of a product look better for their audience because they're selling the product. And that's the problem that I have. But when it comes to these beauty gurus and stuff, using these apps, the only reason that it's even at least based on what I've seen over the last <clears throat> several years, it's only a topic of conversation because they're using it to falsely advertise for a product. Nobody's here to say, oh, Facetune is the, the most terrible thing. Photoshop can go to hell. Um, I mean, maybe some people are, but it's usually a topic of conversation because it's like, oh, let me fine tune this video and show you what an amazing primer this is and how if you use this primer, you're not going to have pores. But all that it is is actually um, Photoshop for video. And of course, like, correct me if I'm wrong as always, but how do you guys feel about Facetune? What I really wish would happen and I know that this is just wishful thinking, but I'm still going to say it. I wish that these companies, these beauty companies and skincare companies, if they're going to work with these influencers and send products and say, you know, we'd love if you would share this on social media, or maybe even if it might even be an agreement that they're in with the influencer there needs to be some fine print in that agreement 
to say you cannot um, post the video or the photo with any altering effects. Now the one thing that I'll say, when I say altering, I'm talking about rechanging the shape of your face, skin smoothing, increasing the size of your eyes to make a mascara look better, changing the saturation so that an eyeshadow looks more pigmented. Those are the kinds of cha changes I'm talking about. If you're just going to take a photo and increase the lightness a little bit or um, you know, drop down the, the warmth of the photo, I've done that with a few photos because in my um, living room when I take photos because of the lamps that we have in there, it's a very warm light. So sometimes I'll, it, it's a, the lighting in my living room is kind of dim, but it's also very warm. So if and when I take photos in my living room, it looks better if I increase the lightness and drop down the warmth a little bit. That to me is completely different than altering the way your pores look, the way your, you know, lashes look, like that kind of stuff that we see from a lot of influencers. So that's kind of my stance when it comes to beauty gurus and using these kinds of apps to advertise for products. Do I think that it's ever going to get any better? No. And the reason that I'm such a pessimist about it is because brands want money. Influencers want engagement, which equals money. And if they can serve each other, why would one be correcting the other? At the end of the day, money is always going to come above morals with most companies. I'm not going to say all of them, but some of the repeat offenders that I think of are companies like Tarte, Benefit, Becca used to be kind of bad, but they're out of business. Um, it's, it's a lot of the brands that are sold in Sephora and Ulta, a lot of the big brands, ColourPop. I doubt that we'll see any change, but how do you guys feel about this? And specifically, how do you feel about someone like Michaela, who has said that she does not use these apps, but it's so clear that she does? You know, for me, trusted influencers kind of went away a couple years ago, but I think it's funny when you're doubling down, but the proof says otherwise. That's what I find interesting. So anyway, those are going to be my thoughts for now. Um, I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this, but it's very hot and I'm going to have a good day. So for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.